You guys ready? Good. Yeah, Coach, uh, how did you all adjust to, you know, coming inside and, and uh, what you have to do to, you know, make sure you all get in the work you want to do before you get down to Miami? Yeah, when you come inside, it actually get us get us ready for tomorrow because when you normally you've got two fields to do offense and defense and then you come inside and the same thing will be down there in Miami. We'll have to work our individual where you split the field up 50-50 O and D. So it's actually a good little uh, practice for us. But you always got to be able to adjust. We would have gone outside if it hadn't been too bad, but uh, Brian Boydner, our equipment guy, is kind of getting soft in his old age. And so he didn't want to – he was worried about all the equipment and – Packing everything up, the, the footballs, things being wet. But uh, it was good work. Obviously, if it's really bad weather, we'll come inside. And uh, with, with Caleb coming back, you know, what, when you all first took over, what did y'all see and what do y'all, uh, you know, have as his improvement plan and what have you seen since he's been back for a week? Well, yeah. Well, certainly, uh, anytime, obviously, he's rehabbing in the offseason, he's going to be a little further behind than the other guys. And so we got to be smart how we bring him along. So that's why you saw his workload last week. Should increase this week, uh, but he's coming along. He's doing everything that we were asking him to do, and he's done a nice job of what we're throwing at him. This will be a good test for him down in Miami. But uh, same thing with Spriggs, and then you get Mayfield, and so we, you know Jalen will work at some guard, and then if the numbers, depending on, uh, on the rep counts, how it's going, he may have to swing back out to right. But that's why we worked in there to protect ourselves and kind of mix and match. Emma yeah, Gary, his ceiling. Where, where you all hope to get him to? Uh, well, like all of our players, you, you hope to get the best out of them. You, 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 all these guys, they want to improve. Uh, they want, we want them to be the best versions of themselves. That's all we can ask them. I'm not going to put any kind of label, say he needs this or that. We just need to get him as the best Caleb McGarry as we possibly can. Right. Um, you know, here's the thing. It's, it's, there's nothing long-term with Marlon. It's um, trying to be smart, being proactive. And so I just wouldn't – it won't be a long-term thing. I won't anticipate him going down in Miami. But I did not – I'm not concerned that it's long-term. But, again, I, do, I don't want to predict and, you know, things can happen. But that's the plan right now. How do you manage getting the, the, the work you want, obviously, out of joint practices versus trying to protect the guys? It's obviously it's a little bit different when you think it's going to be – like, how do you manage that balance? Well – when you go down there, you agree on certain terms, so it's a lot like the practice where it's a little more controlled environment where we won't tackle. It'll be a thud environment. Uh, obviously, we won't make the quarterbacks live. So you, you somewhat can control that. Now, things have happened on the football field. You guys have all been around practices that you can't prevent everything, but it's a little bit more controlled. You can kind of script the situations you want to work. Um, so you get some red zone work. You go down there and script it, script some two-minute stuff. You get all the situational third down. It just helps you control it, and you get more shots at it than you would in a game. I mean, obviously, if things go bad, you may not get you may only get one shot down in the red zone. You may only get one field goal attempt. You know, a few punts, depending. So that, that's where it's really important because you do you can control all those situations. Sure. Yeah, he's a guy that's you know he's, he's played he's played it live NFL snaps, so you, you actually get a, a decent evaluation on him. And you know we had guys that have some familiar, familiarity with him on the staff, and in the scouting side, so we brought him in here. And um, like a lot of these free agents, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's it's a balance because the cap number went down, and so you know it was an it was an interesting year, especially a lot of guys in that that uh, and you see probably a lot in the league, a lot of guys signed one year deals. And so we, we feel fortunate we were able to sign some of the guys we did. And he's been in there competing, and we like what he's shown us so far. Scott? Your, 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 your inside um, uh, linebacker seems to be a pretty deep group. Obviously, you've got the front line talent. Mm -hmm. Talk about how the, the, the versatility and athleticism and like what they do for your entire defense. Sure. Johnson, Quay, and the guys. Right. Well, if you want to be multiple, it lets you, you know, versatility is the key. And so, you know, there, there'll be times where, you know, we, we can get creative because of those guys' skill sets. You may see, you know, three of those guys on the field at the same time. You could see four. You could see, you know, two. How do we mix and match? We feel like the guys that will be dressed will all have a role on the defense on game day. And then obviously the ones that aren't, you know, regular starters, they need to help Marquise and Hoff on, on fourth down. 
and in a special teams game. But it has been. And what I've been pleased with is I thought the you know two inside guys of rookies that did a nice job there tonight were Earl and Dorian. And we'll see if they can go down there against a different scheme, uh, different environment down in Miami, and then Saturday night will be big for them again. You gonna get me to talk about scheme? Absolutely. I mean, you're kind of sitting here asking about pressure packages. I am gonna take a left turn and say, do you like his ability to kind of do a bunch of different things? Yes. Yeah. We we value that. Yeah. Deion's had a he's had a good camp. Zach, so. a lot of love, coach to coach, on you guys being the first in the NFL to reach 100 percent vaccination rate. What does it say about your team for them to come together and get that done? Well, I, I, all we ever tried to do was to educate our guys and let them make their own choices. Uh, like I said, I'm not a pandering politician. We try to give them the information, told them to research it themselves. Um, and that's pretty it. I mean, it's really about those guys, you know, and that's that's the thing. We didn't sit here try to push or do anything like that. We just gave them the facts, educate yourself. And those guys made, obviously, the, the choices they made. And for you, does it make your, your staff's job easier knowing that your entire team is under that umbrella of uh, vaccination? Well, it's certainly... You know, the, you, there was the protocols that are in place. If you're unvaccinated, you're, all, you're, you're essentially using last year's protocols. And then if, if you are vaccinated, the protocols have changed a little bit. So a little bit, uh, you know, obviously the logistical things when you travel, yeah, certainly that would that will benefit us. Story. You said yesterday that Quadra Allison, who you're expecting, you know, a big week for him, this is going to be sure. a big week for him. What are you looking for from him? What, how, at what point in the evaluation? Well, it'll be this week. Um, like this this week, we we got to get more carries. I mean, again, you got to obviously got to give Tennessee credit. We we were too far behind the sticks. It didn't get enough runs called. Like I said, that was the big picture of this precinct. There's a lot of different approaches you can take. You can go in there and try to scheme things up and 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 look pretty to to trick somebody, or you sit here and say, hey, we're gonna get an apples to apples evaluation, and we got to execute better. But I really, I, I didn't think that was a a fair assessment of the running backs. With Caleb, or Hawk, or uh, Foreman, we just didn't get enough carries. I mean, you're, you were in a lot of second and longs, kind of forced a couple of runs just to get a, get a couple in there. So we had to do a better job staying on track, so we can get an evaluation of him running. And then obviously third down will be critical in the pass game, protection wise, and what they can do free releasing from the backfield. As a play caller, I feel like we've probably asked you this before, but now you have Cordero Patterson out, out there running around. How, when you kind of like think about scheming for a guy like that, this isn't a scheme. But when you kind of like think about what layers he can provide sure. in offense, I mean, what do you kind of look at when you're looking at him? Well, it's all those guys. I think that's our job as coaches is to push them. Uh, I, you know, I think been around too many. You say, hey, he can't do this. And, you know, and, you know people have, you know, I respect everybody's opinion, but until we see him do it, okay, then lesson learned. Okay, you're right. He, he may not be able to do this. I mean, any player we have skill-wise. Um, like I said, I mean, you go in there, and a lot of these guys, I think we have a pretty versatile group. Uh, you know, Lee's probably the only one. Like, he wants to get some go routes and, and some, you know, three-level throws, but we're probably not going to do that with Lee. I think he's proven he can't, can't run the go routes, but not to say we won't try maybe in the red zone. But the rest of those guys, we just try to push them and, and to see what they can do, what they can handle, so we're not wishing and hoping we scheme something up, you know, week three or four, and they've never run it before. Does that help? Sure. Is, do you feel like you can get to the point once the practice, the practice are over with, you kind of basically have a really good idea of what you want to see before even before the game? Comes? Absolutely, absolutely. Because you've been, I've been a part of these things where you try a lot of different things during the week, and then it's just the program's philosophy, what you want to do during that preseason game. You would hope that if you've got enough good work in, which which I anticipate, and so does Miami. So we'll get that Wednesday and Thursday, and then Miami's going to do whatever they feel is best for their team for Saturday night, and we'll do what we think is best. But um, again, different approaches. But yes, I think you'll get we'll get a ton out of these practices. So I, I didn't hear the first part. I know, I know. Yeah. How, how, does, how does that affect your rep count, rep work with Mike Davis? In terms of what he... In terms of, like, 
wanting to make sure that you need to be young, proven guys. And yeah. Yeah, that, that's a fine line. If we thought with some of those veterans um, that we anticipate that have done a good job in camp, that's the only way to, to get a fair shot at those other guys. And then at some point, we need to see, you know, we got to make a decision. We need to see Mike Ron in the preseason. And uh, same with CP, you know, with some of those vets. If we feel good about them, that's all right. Well, here's a fair. Like, we can't, we're not going to be able to get all six running backs 10 plus carries. So that's, that's kind of the decision. You know, see how this week goes and evaluate how the other guys are doing. All right, who needs to get carries Saturday night? Yeah, you value you value that, and then you gotta we we, we gotta sit down and say, all right, what's best for this team? Like, if we say, all right, we he's had a good camp, does he need it? And everybody's different. Like, I've coached a lot of guys. Hey, they may I'll use Delaney Walker for example. You know, he always wanted to get a couple snaps in and feel it. There's other guys that know I'm good. I you know whatever. And there's also you know I wasn't in the, the top decision making, but a lot of that stuff that thought went into it. Um, and and a lot of that'll be the same thing with with Matt. So. Uh, again, I don't think any two guys I've ever coached have been exactly the same. Uh, you do appreciate when the guys are honest, and I always did appreciate it about a guy like Delaney. All right, appreciate it, guys. Thank you all.